Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about the Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit. Now, this is a game development framework using, as you may be able to guess from the name, the Ruby programming language. It is a commercial uh, cross-platform game toolkit, uh, but right now, at least uh, as of the time this video is published, maybe the next couple of days, you can grab it for free. Uh, this is the standard edition, 100% off right now. Come on in, get it for free, and it's basically yours forever. I got it for free about four years ago and still own the same version. He updates it pretty quickly constantly. Uh, this is not an open source project, so if that's something you are looking for, this isn't it. But if you want to work with game programming using the Ruby programming language, this is probably your best choice. There's a couple other options out there like Gosu and I think Ruby 2D, but uh, Dragon Ruby is probably the most um, finalized, complete option out there. Now, obviously, at the core of Dragon Ruby is the Ruby programming language itself. Now, I'm not going to give you any kind of like details about what Ruby is all about, because quite frankly, I have barely used Ruby. Ruby isn't used that much in the world of game development. Uh, a version of RPG Maker, it was RPG Maker VX Ace, I believe, used Ruby as its own internal programming language before switching to, well, they switch every few years. So uh, not a big shock there, but uh, Ruby was also probably most famous famously known for the web development framework Ruby on Rails. Uh, that kind of took over the world for about three or four years. I don't know why it faded a little bit into obscurity as well. But that is the biggest area where Ruby is known from. You can see samples of Ruby right here. The Ruby uh, language is fully documented. It's an open source language available online. But back to the Dragon Ruby game toolkit. Right now you can get the uh, standard version, once again, uh, completely for free, uh, at least for the next couple of days. Uh, in terms of features, this is, um, again, it's a highly optimized C language based runtime. Uh, it should be fast. Uh, the scripting on top might be a little bit slower. I don't think Ruby is as fast as, say, Lua at game logic, but this has been used multi platform. Uh, there are, have been Nintendo Switch games made with this. In terms of platform supported, you've got PC, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, web, iOS, Android, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4 out there. Um, it's, again, they say fast. The APIs are data oriented and quite simple. They are also well documented. We'll get back to that in just a second. Also, if you miss the, the free version for the st like the standard, uh, there is an unrestricted license available. If you make under two thousand dollars USD a month, you're under you are under eighteen years of age. Any, by the way, not all. So you don't need to be eighteen and making less than two grand. You're a student, um, you're a teacher, or you've worked in the public service, or so on. You can reach out to him, and he can get you a free copy of it potentially. So a standard version, you get Mac OS, Windows, Linux, slash Steam Deck, Raspberry Pi, Web, and so on support. Uh, this is a new feature. Triangle Primitives used to be actually exclusive to all versions with the release of Dragon Ruby 6. This is now available in all versions. Uh, there's also pro versions. This is where you're going to have to jump up and buy a pro license if you want to do iOS or Android. Uh, and I think platforms like PlayStation and so on. But PlayStation also has the catch that you need to have... Um, the, the pro license console compilation requires a business entity, NDA verification and all that. That's just welcome to the world of developing for consoles. So it is, again, a very code focused language. You can see kind of the hello world version of Ruby right here. Um, pretty clean and straightforward. Again, I, I can't get into a lot of uh, demonstration with you here because I don't know the Ruby programming language. And honestly, I don't have a lot of incentive to learn it. Uh, but you can see, get an idea of what it is all about. There are six draw primitives you need to know. Solids, sprites, labels, lines, borders, and sounds. Here's how you use all of those things and you can put them all together to make games. So we're going to head on over. We've got the a Dragon Ruby. Uh, so six was recently released. And it's got a bit of a walk back about or a description of why he went about building this because you kind of wonder uh you know there are so many frameworks out there why why make one more I, I think that's a stupid question because i think that we should have more game engines damn it we need more frameworks more game engines more libraries more more and more so you never need to justify why you build this stuff to me but if you're wondering why he did it after a decade of indie game development and many battle scars there's one point i can't stress enough as an indie game dev releasing cross-platform and i mean every platform um is so important for commercial sex success success i can't speak all of a sudden uh we've come to believe that releasing to all platforms from 
they want is too much work. And this is true given that established engines put the burden of dealing with platform fragmentation on our shoulders. Cross-platform to them means we'll create a binary for you that may or may not work. This is usually tested in the 11th hour and often found to be false. It sucks to be put into a position where you have to deal with platform fragmentation days away from release. Uh, your most valuable asset is your time, and that time shouldn't be spent fixing deficiencies of an engine. That is why Dragon Ruby was created to be an engine that lets game developers focus on their game, knowing that it will look and behave the exact same everywhere without needing platform-specific hacks or workarounds. So it is all about the cross-platform. Uh, there's also a lot of things here for um, live testing and debugging of your game. So you can actually live inspect any part of your game rendering with an in-game overlay, uh, toggling of letterbox to edge-to-edge -edge screen rendering, which is useful if you're using like, multiple different devices, you want to handle the different aspect ratios and so on. Speaking of which, you also have live updates. You can switch the orientation between landscape and portrait, quick testing that way. Uh, reboot, restart your game without having to close and reopen your environment. Built-in ability to slow down or speed up your simulation for debugging. Built-in capabilities to record and replay gameplay for capturing hard to reproduce bugs. And attached terminal for debug output. By the way, on the topic of debug output and tooling, this is where Dragon Ruby may not be the greatest for you uh, because there is no debug. You're basically doing the print brute force way of debugging things there. Uh, so that, if, if you wanted like a nice integrated debugger, you're not going to find it. Also, if you want to have uh, code completion and a turnkey solution that way, this is going to be a slightly more challenging engine to work with. Um, but we got some new features here, including uh, cross-platform input no normalization, so facilities to help unify input, built-in input awareness that keeps track of the last active input used, extremely helpful for presenting game instructions contextual to the player's preferred input device, built-in functions that normalize UI component navigation with gamepad or keyboards. Basically, this is your, you know, generic-sized input handler that most game engines have. Uh, touch and mouse normalization, allowing you to treat taps and clicks as one type of action, and a well-tuned dead zone threshold for gamepads, analog sticks. Uh, and then we've got some new features here, including Linux ARM 64 binary generation. So this is great for Raspberry Pi. And there is a rumor out there that Steam Deck 2 or Steam Deck Next or Steam Deck whatever is going to be ARM 64 based. So in that case, it will just work. Uh, performance improvements across the board for Collision Geometry API. Um, so they're saying that it, it's uh, significantly faster than uh, Unity by a large margin already. Uh, continued performance improvements to the rendering pipeline. Improved garbage collection event management, which significantly improved battery life and thermal levels on handheld devices and the ability to render triangle primitives is now available at all licensed tiers. So you can only render prime, um, triangle primitives before on, I think it was the pro license version. So that is something that has changed. There are a variety of sample apps to get you going. You can actually check them out online. They're also available in the GitHub repo, by the way. Uh, they're also included directly inside. So uh, they are uh, shipped with it. You don't need to go ahead and download them elsewhere. But if you want to, they are available. Another cool thing that is true with Ruby, it is well documented. So here I am right now at docs.dragonruby.org. There is good solid documentation of the API of the samples. There is a getting started book to get you up and going quick start guide there. So definitely nice um, support and documentation behind this framework. Uh, and then again, as I mentioned earlier on, these actually ship with it. And I think the versions that ship with it are probably the ones you want to go ahead and use. But there are an absolute ton of samples out there to give you an idea. So if you need to learn how to work with uh, physics or collisions, it's here. Uh, web connections, HTTP requests, so on, they're there. A variety of different uh, sample game uh, projects are here as well. We got some stuff on performance tuning here, a variety of different samples there. So you get an idea of just how many samples there are in here. And if you want to do something, again, how do I draw a sprite on screen? Here's how you can draw a sprite on screen using animations, using a sprite sheet, and then drill in here, find the code, and you get an idea of what the code is like. And it's yeah, you know, even if you don't know Ruby, Ruby looks very Python-esque in, in form and structure. So if you've used Python or GD script or any of those languages, you can probably guess how to work with Ruby, to be honest. It's not exactly, uh, that's the nice thing about scripting languages in general. They tend to be very easy to pick up. All right, so that is it. That is all I am talking about today. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Dragon Ruby Game Toolkit. Again, if you watch this video around the time I'm publishing it, the standard version is currently 100% off. Again, 
things to be aware of. This is not an open source engine. So if you're looking for an open source engine, you won't find it. But it is a very mature and battle-tested engine that has been used to make games for a variety of platforms. And being cross-platform is kind of the core of what Dragon Ruby is all about, as we saw in the description earlier on. So if that sounds good to you, if you want to work at the code level to create games in a multi-platform way, you're willing to work low over the fact it's not open source and doesn't have like, like an integrated debugger type environment, you're back to like the old print style debugging or the brute force debugging. If you're fine with all of that, pick it up for free, give it a check. And if you missed this video and you're much later on, uh, you check out, uh, you may qualify for a free license, send him an email, he'll probably help you out. Or wait, he he's periodically does these uh, giveaways, uh, you know, normally to correspond with major events like game jams or major releases, etc. So you may actually be able to wait for it. Or of course, you can just buy it. It's uh, about 50 bucks. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Dragon Ruby game toolkit. Have you used it before? Have you used the Ruby programming language? And if so, what did you think? Let me know. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.